In this video, we're going to look at using Excel to make connections between recursive and explicit equations, especially the kind that come up in pattern contexts that we use a lot in math classes starting in elementary school. So let me give you an example. Here's a set of figures. So figure one has this one white square surrounded by eight blue squares. And then as we increase, fig figure two has two white squares, figure three has three white squares, etc. So we might ask students a lot of different questions about this pattern. How many blue squares will there be in figure 28? What will be the first figure that has over a thousand blue squares, etc., etc.? These are all problems to get students thinking algebraically. And, um, you know, when students have the hang of it, this kind of thing might be a fairly simple linear equation, but it's certainly not for many people at many times. And so let's look at what we can do with Excel. So on this page, I've started, this is just counting from the figures that we had on the last page. This last one has 14 blue squares, if you count them. So, and I'm going to... Um, I'm going to just extend the white squares because we might notice right away that the white squares increase by one every time. So the number of white squares is the same as the figure number. That's, that's fairly clear. And then if we look at the blue, it seems like we have a pattern going on. It seems like we increase by two squares every time. And we can actually justify that geometrically. Um, if we do... I'm going to just um, change the color of these squares. If we look at this geometrically, that the two yellow squares, say, are the two new squares, we can see why we're increasing by two every time. Okay? And then we can get a recursive equation. That's one that depends on the previous terms um, for the number of blue squares by starting with the equal sign. And then we take the number of blue squares in the previous square, and we add 2. We can drag that equation down. You notice that it didn't even, we didn't use column A at all, so the fact that I didn't um, have the value in column A didn't matter in that case. So even if we wanted to know like the 500th pattern or something, it wouldn't take very long to do this in Excel. And it's often a lot easier for students to pick up the recursive pattern. And um, with the technology, that actually becomes a practical way to do problems, too. Without the technology, you need another strategy, say, to get figure 1,000. That doesn't require you to get figures 1 through 999 first. But with Excel, you know, it's not a very big deal to get figures 1 through 999. But let's look at how we might look at this problem in terms of finding an explicit equation and how a student might go about that. Now, I think, you know, he or she might be fairly confident about the numbers in this column. So let's see what we can do in the other column. And I'm going to look at the geometry of the figure. And let's start, um, let's start with the top. How many, how many cells do we have on top? And... Let's see, it looks like here we have two more than the white squares, here we have two more than the white squares, here we have two more than the white squares, etc. So the top looks to me like it's equal to the number of white squares plus two. All right, now that is an explicit equation. We can start, we can drag this down. We don't need to know. We can say figure 1,000, it'll be 1,002. You just add two. We don't need to get figure 999 first. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write this as um, white plus two. Okay. And now I know from symmetry of the figure that the bottom is equal to the top. So that will also give me, and I can actually just write the equation as an equal. Okay. And let's see the left. 
Well, the left is always three. So the left, we just have three. So we can put that in, and I'll actually do this with a formula here. Just equals. And the right is also 3. And the right is equal to the left. You can do it that way. Okay, so maybe this is a way to build up an explicit formula. And let's see how we're doing. So I'm going to actually add, you know, just add another column here. Yeah, maybe I want one more. And I'll make this one a little wider. All right, so my total would be the top plus the bottom plus the left plus the right. And I can drag this down. And we see that the total is not matching with the total blue squares that we had before. And, but it seems to be four more all the way along. So that's a call to go back to the geometry of the figure. And we can see that by doing the top and the bottom and the left and the right, we countered the corners twice. All right, so we actually need to we need to take away those four corners. So we're going to change this formula. See, I have F two plus G two plus H two plus I two. And I'm going to subtract J2. I could just subtract 4. And of course, there's a lot of other ways to do this. And we'll drag that new formula down. And they match. Okay, so then we can start putting these together. We have W plus 2 and W plus 2. So that's 2 W's plus 4. And then we added 3, so that's 2w plus 7, and then we did 2w plus 10, and then we subtracted 4, 2w minus 6. Now, this is kind of the sort of thing for somebody to do. Obviously, an expert is not going to do it this way, but this is for somebody who's, who's learning to make sense of these and who's learning what variables mean, which is not an easy concept. There are lots of other ways to make formulas for this figure, and if you're in a class, students can compare different ways of doing this, and that actually gets into some of the rules of algebra and why different expressions are equal to each other. So Excel is a good tool for looking at the connections between recursive and explicit equations and for exploring pattern problems.